Here is your latest African news. Africa wide. Petition seeks UNESCO's help for African students who fled Ukraine. A total of 50,000 people have so far signed the What Next for African Students Who Fled Ukraine petition to fight for African students whose studies in Ukraine were disrupted by the war. Organizers have called on UNESCO, the Global Education Coalition, the European Commission, universities in Europe, the UK, the Irish states, Canada, the United States and all countries and organizations with a focus on education to create a support package and to provide scholarships for African students so the latter can continue and complete their interrupted studies. Ukraine was home to more than 70,000 international students, with many coming from Africa. When the world started to welcome Ukrainian refugees, African students experienced racism and discrimination although they left the country altogether. Reports have emerged that while Ukrainian students have received remarkable support, their African counterparts are facing many problems. According to recent reports, African students who have returned to their home countries are not able to continue studies, and those who have applied for scholarships that have been made available for Ukrainian refugees were told they are not eligible to receive the support. Universities in Ukraine that African students attended are not giving them transcripts and several institutions don't believe that students were residing in Ukraine before. African students who have been pursuing studies in Ukraine through government-to-government -government scholarship programs or individual scholarships also remain uncertain about their education in Ukrainian universities. Africa Wide African journalists condemn media outlets for using images of black people in coverage of US-UK monkeypox. Africa's Foreign Press Association has condemned media outlets that use images of black people alongside stories about the monkeypox outbreak in North America and the United Kingdom. The FPAA said it is disturbing that media outlets use stock images of monkeypox sufferers with black skin for stories about the outbreak in Europe and North America. The association condemned the perpetuation of the negative stereotype that assigns calamity to the African race and privilege or immunity to other races. The professional body urged outlets to instead use images of hospitals in Europe and the US or failing that to show electron microscope images of the virus. The FPAA described the actions of media outlets as very insensitive and urged editors of news outlets to update their image policy. It also asked editors to censor their staff from using images of Africans, people of African descent or people living in Africa to cover outbreaks in the United Kingdom and North America. Monkeypox cases have been reported across at least a dozen European and North American countries this month. The monkeypox virus can bring on pus filled boils that hurt and are infectious for weeks. It can also cause symptoms of fever, headaches, swellings, and exhaustion, according to the World Health Organization. Monkeypox can be spread by close contact with an infected person or animal and by touching clothing or bedding used by someone with a rash, according to World Health Organization. Nigeria. Nigerian court sentences Danish national to death for killing wife and children. A citizen of Denmark, Peter Nielsen, has been sentenced to death by a Lagos High Court sitting at Tafar Balewa Square, TBS, for killing his Nigerian wife Zainab and three-year-old daughter Petra. The judge gave the verdict after finding Nielsen guilty of the offense of murder on two counts. The judge held that Nielsen smothered Zainab Nelson and Petra Nelson to death. The judge also held that the evidence of the sixth prosecution witness, PW6, that on April 5th, 2018, at 4.10 a.m., she saw Peter Nelson beating and hitting Zena's head on the floor, corroborated the oral evidence of Professor John Obafunwa, PW4. Nelson was arraigned on June 13, 2018, on a two count charge of murder. He pleaded not guilty to the murder charge, contrary to Section 223 of the Criminal Law of Lagos State 2015, following which trial commenced. The Lagos State government accused Nelson, now 57, of smothering Zainab and their daughter Petra Nelson to death at about 3.45 a.m. on April 5, 2018. 
South Africa. Hundreds evacuated in South Africa amid renewed flooding. Hundreds of people have been evacuated to safety after heavy rains once again hammered South Africa's coastal province of KwaZulu-Natal, flooding roads and houses and damaging properties, a government official has said. The province is still restoring damaged infrastructure and making plans to rehome people displaced after flooding last month, which was among the ways to have affected KwaZulu-Natal province in its recorded history. April floods killed 448, with 88 still missing, left more than 6,800 homeless and damaged more than 1.5 billion US dollars of infrastructure. The province had received early warnings from the South African Weather Service, alerting it to further disruptive rainfall in a number of towns including Durban, the worst hit by the previous floods. He said approximately 250 people had been evacuated from the care centers in Tongat and Tehus in Durban, including retirement villages to other facilities. Only one family has evacuated due to the collapse of an informal dwelling. Scientists believe the southeastern coast of Africa is becoming more vulnerable to violent storms and floods as human emission of heat-trapping gases cause the Indian Ocean to warm. They expect the trend to worsen dramatically in coming decades. Africa-wide African Union Chief Maki Sall announces visit to Moscow, Kyiv. Senegalese President Maki Sall has said he will travel to Russia and Ukraine soon on behalf of the African Union, whose presidency he currently holds. The trip had been due to take place on 18th May but did not go ahead due to scheduling issues and new dates have been put forward, Sall said at a joint news conference with visiting German Chancellor Olaf Scholz. He had received a mandate from the African Union to undertake the trip for which Russia had extended an invitation, he added. Russian-Ukraine conflict which has hit the global economy hard due to rising cereal prices and fuel shortages has met with a divided African response. In early March, Senegal abstained from voting on a United Nations resolution, overwhelmingly adopted, that called on Russia to withdraw from Ukraine. However, a few weeks later, it voted in favor of another resolution demanding Russia halt the war. Nearly half of African nations abstained or did not vote in the two resolution votes. Happy African Day! Today is Africa Day, which is observed annually to commemorate the founding of the Organization of Africa Unity, OAU, which was created on 25th May 1963. It was the precursor of the African Union, AU. Africa Day provides an opportunity to celebrate the socio-economic achievements of the continent. This year's theme is Strengthening Resilience in Nutrition and Food Security on the African Continent. The African Renaissance and Diaspora Network will hold a live stream event to celebrate the day with the theme showcasing young African pace setters for development. Idris Elba in conjunction with YouTube will also be holding a live concert to commemorate the day featuring some of Africa's finest stars. This year, Jamaica will for the first time also join diasporans alike in the celebration at the AU headquarters. Also, Tunacheki will be holding our own live stream today, inviting some popular YouTubers and celebrating this great occasion together. How can I celebrate Africa Day? Africa Day is a wonderful opportunity to celebrate Africa as a continent and its rich culture and diversity. It's a wonderful way to start a conversation with your children about why they are proud to be African and what makes them proud. You could decorate your classroom for the occasion and theme your learning for the day on Africa. For any age group, the subject of Africa is lovely for geography so that they can learn more about the diversity of the land and features of different African countries. Africa Wide Ghanaian Journalist Launches Whistleblower Group Ghanaian investigative journalist Anas Aremeyo Anas has launched WASIC, the Whistleblowers and Journalist Safety International Center. It's a self-funded organization designed to provide protection, safe houses, legal services and advocacy for journalists and whistleblowers in Africa. Anas himself is not new to the danger and death threats that come with the work of investigative journalism. One of his closest collaborators, Ahmed Hussein Suale, who had worked with Anas, was shot dead near his family home in Accra in 2019. His murder remains unsolved. The newly launched center is already hosting seven whistleblowers and journalists from the continent for the past year. 
The safety of journalists and whistleblowers across Africa has come under scrutiny amid concerns and the group's agenda is to promote partnerships, prevention, protection and prosecution of perpetrators of crime against journalists in Africa by promoting the principles, national and regional coordination mechanisms that enhance the safety of journalists and combating impunity on crimes against them. Cameroon. Cameroon's paramount ruler dies aged 97. Cameroon's Mancon community are mourning their paramount ruler, Fon Aguafo III Solomon, who has died aged 97. Fondly referred to as King Solomon the Wise, he was an influential political figure who was one of the architects of the reunification of English-speaking Southern Cameroons and Francophone La Republique du Cameroon in 1972. Fon Aguafo III Solomon went on to become an MP then the first national president of the ruling CPDM party for decades, although he was rarely received in audience by the party leader, President Paul Bia. The late Paramount ruler has also studied agriculture in neighboring Nigeria and together with his children cultivated a variety of crops and exotic fruits. According to the tradition of the Mankon people, their king has simply disappeared. They believe Fon Nangwa Fothad had spirited himself away to meet his ancestors. On the lighter side, many will remember him as a giant man with an extremely big shoe size that tickled many. Meanwhile, a new king has been chosen. He is Fru Asa Angwafo, an educationist. DRC New date set for return of Patrice Lumumba's tooth. Belgium will return a relic of Patrice Lumumba, the first Prime Minister of DRC, who was assassinated by them in 1961 to the country on June 20th at an official ceremony in Brussels. The principle of this restitution demanded by the Lumumba family from the Belgian King Felipe has been accepted since 2020. However, the ceremony has also been postponed several times, notably because of the coronavirus pandemic. The aim is to return the remains of Patrice Lumumba, 1925-1961, to, to his native country, in this case a tooth recovered by the Belgian justice system from the family of a policeman who contributed to the disappearance of the body over 60 years ago. The Belgian policeman Gerard Serte, now deceased, also took with him other relics like hunting trophies and art from DRC. Only one tooth attributed to Lumumba was recovered by the Federal Prosecutor's Office. A hero of independence in June 1960, Patrice Lumumba became the first Prime Minister of the former Belgian Congo, former Zaire, now the DRC, and was overthrown a few months later in a coup d'etat. He was executed on 17th January 1961 along with two brothers in arms by separatists from the Katanga region with the support of mercenaries from Belgium. His body dissolved in acid has never been found. The restitution of this relic will make it possible to finally erect a memorial in his honor in Kinshasa. Africa Wide Mining giant pleads guilty to bribery in Africa, South America. A subsidiary of Swiss-based mining giant Glencore pleaded guilty to seven counts of bribery in a London court. The firm will pay up to 1.5 billion US dollars after other subsidiaries pleaded guilty to bribery in Africa and South America. The United States Department of Justice said the natural resource firm had entered a plea agreement to foreign bribery and market manipulation schemes. According to the British Serious Fraud Office, SFO, company agents and employees paid bribes worth over 25 million US dollars for preferential access to oil in Cameroon, Equatorial Guinea, Ivory Coast, Nigeria and South Sudan. All with Glencore's approval between 2011 and 2016. The farm will find how much it must pay in fines at a sentencing in June. It has also settled Brazilian bribery charges against it, but said Dutch and Swiss investigations remained ongoing. Ethiopia Disgraced Ethiopian Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus reappointed as WHO Director General. 
WHO Director General Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus has been reappointed to a second five-year term by the UN Health Agency's member countries. No other candidate challenged Tedros for the post. Tedros, a former government minister from Ethiopia, has directed WHO throughout its management of the global response to COVID-19 and withstood occasional withering criticism over its multiple missteps. He is the first African to lead the agency and the only director general not qualified as a medical doctor. He is also the first WHO leader not to be supported by their home country. Ethiopia has previously accused Tedros of misconduct for support of the terrorism group TPLF. South Africa EFF protesters march demanding France to leave Africa. Hundreds of demonstrators from the South African Economic Freedom Fighters Party marched on Africa Day to the French Embassy in Pretoria. As the continent marked the 59th anniversary of the foundation of the Organization of African Unity, the protesters demanded that France should leave Africa. Dressed in their traditional red t-shirts and caps, the political activists carried placards reading, France must pay reparations for its colonial crimes. The party leader Julius Malema urged France to exit the economic, political, cultural and military affairs of the continent. Armed police guarded the embassy and French ambassador Aurelien Lechevalier appeared briefly to receive the protesters' memorandum of demands vowing to convey it to Paris. Demonstrations against the French policy in Africa have taken place across the continent in the past few months. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, follow, share and like our video. It's the best way of supporting us. And remember, Africa is watching.